pre-Ruckman Ruckmanites. That's the name of this video. And what I want to show you in this video is this, I want to debunk this lie that the King James Only movement got started, or was started by Peter Ruckman. Uh, there was a guy that, that uh, had a bet out there, you know, anybody that can prove that there was King James Only movement before Peter Ruckman, uh, you know, he offered some reward. And of course, you can prove it very easily, and the guy backed out, wouldn't pay anybody the money. But the point is, there has always been a crowd of people out there, a, a group of Christians that believe in the King James Bible. Okay, ever since this thing's been out, more spiritual fruit has been produced by the King James Bible and those that believe it is God's perfect word. More spiritual fruit has been produced by that group than any group in, hist in the history of the church or even in the history of the world. Okay, this book produces spiritual fruit. The other ones produce corruption. They're rotten, okay? They're poisonous uh, fruit based bearers. So I want to show you seven men who used and believed the King James Bible all of their lives, okay? So let's take a look at this. Okay, first up we have the revision revised by Dean John William Bergen. Okay, let's zoom in here, get a closer look. Here you have Dean Bergen. He was Dean of a school. His first name wasn't Dean. It was John is his first name. You can see there, John William Bergen died in 1888. Okay, basically when the uh, Westcott and Hort whole Bible came out. Okay, and he was a great opponent of Westcott and Hort. All right, now, here he writes. Sorry, i got to zoom back in here again. My one object has been to defeat the mischievous attempt which was made in 1881 to thrust upon this church and realm a revision of the sacred text. What's he talking about there? The King James Bible is what he's talking about. It says, which recommended, though it be by eminent names, I am thoroughly convinced and am able to prove is untrustworthy from beginning to end. The reason is plain. It has been constructed throughout on an utterly erroneous hypothesis. And I inscribe this volume to you, my friend, as a conspicuous member of that body of faithful and learned laity by whose deliberate verdict, when the whole of the evidence has been produced and the case has been fully argued out, I shall be quite willing that my contention may stand or fall. The English, as well as the Greek, of the newly revised uh, version is hopelessly at fault. It is to me simply unintelligible how a company of scholars can have spent 10 years in elaborating such a very unsatisfactory production. Their uncouth phraseology and their jerky sentences, their pedantic obscurity and their unidiomatic English contrast painfully with the happy turns of expression, the music of the cadences, the felicities of the rhythm of our NIV. Let's say NIV, it says authorized version. Okay? He was defending the King James Bible and writing against the corrupt Westcott and Hort Bible of 1881. See? So there you have a some of the very first writings against the new versions, right when they were starting to come out. The Catholic Vaticanus. Uh, Bibles that then of course after 1881 and, and uh, the 1901 American Standard Version they just started coming out like crazy. So here you have a pre-Ruckman Ruckmanite and you read by the way by the way a defense of the authorized version not the Textus Receptus the authorized version but you read in here and you'll see that he was abrasive many times with how he wrote Ruckman did not start that movement. Okay, here you have a book about the great evangelist Billy Sunday, who had the uh, American Standard Version available to him, and he didn't use it. And I just want to show you this one quote here. The Bible is a common sense book. 
he said. Hmm, what Bible was he talking about? King James Bible. Now I'll show you this one here, another book about Billy Sunday. He says, I want, excuse me, I want people to know what I mean, and that is why I try to get down to where they live. What do I care if some juff-eyed, dainty little dibbity, dibbly dibbly goes tibbly tibbly around because I use plain Anglo-Saxon words, like the King James Bible? More sedate clergymen demanded that he smooth down his abrasive style. Oh, I'm so offended by Ruckman. Well, there are people that were around before Ruckman that were just as abrasive. And Billy Sunday never used anything but a King James Bible. Okay. As usual, Billy made his answers abundantly clear. Blah to liberal theologians and empty-headed intellectuals. Bunk to godless artists and musicians. Lewd entertainment and blasphemous theories such as evolution. Amen. Okay, let me tell those loud-mouthed, big vocabulary, foreign lingo slinging, quack theory preaching Bolsheviki in the pulpits and colleges that I'll put what I preach to the test any time against what they preach. And again, you have the test there. By their fruits ye shall know them. And you know, oh, Billy Sunday wasn't perfect. Oh, he had his problem. Eh, whatever. But he did a lot more than most people today. Okay. He was a great evangelist. Next we have John Wesley. And don't give me, don't write, oh, he didn't believe in eternal security and believed in female pastors and stuff. Yeah, but he was a better man than 90% of the Baptists alive today, so don't, you know, whatever. The guy was beaten for his faith. He preached on the street. Just an amazing, amazing man of God. Okay? He had his errors. He had his problems. Here he says... My ground is the Bible. Yes, I am a Bible bigot. I follow it in all things. Hmm. A Bible believer? Yeah, that's exactly what John Wesley was. Wesley's strength was to be found in the fact that he was Homo Unius Libri, a man of one book, and that book was the Bible. That was the King James Bible. He had no other Bible. You say, well then, you know, he would have used an NIV if he had it available. He had the Dewey Reams available back in his day. Why didn't he use that? 